Hey, I hope you've enjoyed learning about interactive technology and haptics. It, it's all interesting to learn, but you might be asking, where does it all lead to? Why the heck do you keep on babbling about haptics and interactive technology? Well, quite simple. It's the background knowledge for my master's thesis. The Force Phone 2, a project that followed in the footsteps of the previous Force Phone project developed in conjunction with Nokia Research and the Helsinki Institute of Information Technology. I designed and built a rough prototype that would put heat and pressure to the test. Unfortunately, I didn't make any video footage back then, so pictures will have to do. We wanted to see if heat or pressure could be used as a reliable communication output. And you know what? We found that, yeah, it can. I built the prototype itself around an Arduino, and with an old PlayStation portable case to act as the phone. The reason I picked the Arduino was because it was small, low power, and very easy to work with. A heating pad would provide the heat at up to 30 watts using an 18650 battery pack, the same cells you might find in a laptop or even some electric vehicles. <laughs> when we're talking about phones, 30 watts is a ton of power but we needed something that could hit 65 Celsius fast. In fact, we would go back and test three different outputs, 30 watts, 20 watts, and 10 watts. And surprisingly, all three worked. Obviously, the less heat, the slower response time. Yet, it was always enough for users to detect. Pressure was delivered through a motor pulling a rope tightening around the user's hand. And vibration was through your typical vibration motors, same ones you'll find in your iPhone or or any phone for that matter. And the user input was one big purple push button. I did a user study on over 24 people. We threw headphones onto these users to create white noise to eliminate any noise variability. And we did two tests, one indoors and one outdoors walking around. I had programmed the Arduino to randomly cycle through outputs using vibration as a control variable and recording user's reaction time to an SD card. People loved it. The idea of heat as an output on your phone, it was kind of interesting. And better yet, it worked. Look at the chart. Yeah, heat was slower than vibration. It was slower than the pressure that got people's attention instantly. So yeah, heat would take seconds longer to react, but there really was no question that it was noticed. It didn't matter if we were outputting 10 or 30 watts. Obviously, the higher the heat, the faster it was noticed. But when talking to our users, over half of them said they'd prefer to use the heat rather than the typical vibrating motor if they're sitting in a meeting or a classroom. Yet, a fifth of them said the heat was a bit creepy. A little bit too different, a bit unusual. Maybe something they weren't used to. We then asked them, how could this tech be used? We got some interesting responses. A way to get your attention in loud industries such as construction. You know, places where you're not going to feel that vibration and you're not going to hear your phone. You know, it never crossed my mind. But that's actually a pretty good idea. Another user told us it could be an aid to the deaf and disabled. So yeah, so it goes to show you, 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 you can get some pretty useful feedback from actual users. But what was most promising for the whole project was the enthusiasm users showed when sharing their ideas of how alternative haptic feedback could be used. Users were generally excited. They wanted to contribute. They wanted to add their ideas. They were excited to give their input. Looking back from the very beginning, we know that the sense of touch is incredibly versatile. We focused on the senses of temperature and pressure as they seem to be the most promising when looking at what we might think is a usable haptic output. It is important to remember that the hand is very sensitive for sensing the many senses of touch. In the future, we do believe that heat and pressure can be integrated into existing mobile devices to further test how these modalities might be used in two-way conversations and communication. The idea of having a separate item, such as a smartwatch, a glove, or a bracelet, in conjunction with a mobile phone is also kind of an interesting one. Devices that might allow the user to feel the same silent, haptic feedback without the necessity of having to hold a mobile phone in their hands, which can actually be quite important as heat and pressure is not very effective unless it's in close contact with you, the user. Overall, you gotta admit, kinda neat, isn't it? And with that, we're done. This series is over. Wow, 
two years on and off, varying levels of quality, but it's done. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed creating. I hope you learned something. That's all I have for now. As always, no matter where you are in this world, have a good day. Have a good morning. Have a good night. Bye-bye.